today i just want to uh, discuss about just uh, you all to have a glimpse about what actually is tab that is trans catheter aortic valve replacement and uh, what it is actually uh, when it is being done and what is it uh, how is it different and where do we choose and uh, uh, just a glimpse about it So according to the 2017 guidelines, uh, so if you have a severe, if a patient uh, comes with a severe aortic stenosis uh, who is symptomatic, com who comes under stage D and uh, if low surgical, so there is only one option for severe aortic stenosis uh, previously and who is symptomatic and it's a surgical aortic valve replacement. And now there is this uh, therapy, uh, which is transcatheter aortic valve replacement which can be done without doing that open heart surgery and uh, it's uh, mainly uh, being done in patients who are at high risk uh, who have multiple comorbidities and whose age uh, is higher and they won't be fit and they have high mortality during the surgical aortic valve replacement so these are the patients where they fit in this uh, therapy and uh, previous 2017 guidelines, low surgical risk, surgical aortic valve replacement is class one indication and intermediate surgical risk where we have different set of patients uh, who have uh, multiple comorbidities and other things which were included. Uh, if less risk, they'll be included in surgical aortic valve replacement. If they come under a little higher risk and intermediate risk, they'll come under class two indication of uh, aortic valve, transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And in, in high risk patients, Highest patient surgical AVR or TAVR TAVR is a class one indication, and the prohibitive surgical risk class one indication is a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. So this is the first main TAVR done in France in 2002. Uh, Alan Kriber is the first one who uh, did TAVR in 2002 in 57 year old and with a severe bicuspid aortic stenosis with a cardiogenic shock, and uh, uh, it's it's done to write a femoral way. So, development of uh, TAVA. So, the first balloon aortic valvuloplasty is performed in 1985 and later successful animal trials were done uh, with uh, PUT valve in 2000 and then uh, it was taken over. Edward license is the first one to uh, manufacture this valve and developed and uh, introduced in 2004. Uh, recruitment started for partner trails and all these patients who are who underwent this TAVA, uh, they were recruited in partner trail uh, in 2007 after many registries which showed positive outcome. Till date over around uh, 400,000 cases done worldwide, more than 2,000 cases in India. So TAVA devices, what are the different devices available? Uh, TAVA devices, there are two different types mainly balloon expandable and uh, self-expandable devices. Balloon expandable, Edward Sapien is the first one to introduce. They have different valves like Sapien XT, Sapien 3. And uh, Merrill, which is an Indian company, has started uh, manufacturing this uh, so balloon expandable devices, which is called MyVal. And self-expandable devices, uh, Metronic, Abbott and Hydra, they're manufacturing this Metronic, it's called Evolute or Evolute Pro. And then in the newer generations came in about it's called portico and uh, hydra uh, system it's an uh, indian company which they have uh, and they're manufacturing self-expandable devices more than 25 different valves are undergoing trials and there are newer devices and newer variants newer generation variants are there in the in these uh, devices uh, this is how a sapien valve looks like uh, it's uh, mainly first initially started and manufactured by edward life sciences there will be a uh, mesh surrounding and it will be uh, compressed into a sheath where uh, it's mounted to a balloon and is ex expanded, uh, it's uh, deployed uh, near the uh, uh, aortic sinus. So the bioplastic valve will be uh, stitched to this uh, inside so that the uh, mesh surrounding it will be expanded and holding the sinus and the valve functions as a uh, routine uh, surgical aortic valve replacement, how it's being done, it's, it acts the same. So this is a self-expandable stunt. Self-expandable stunt is the, the valve is a little uh, supraortic and supraannular uh, placement. And uh, this, is, this is the evolution, like uh, where the stud size, the diamond size is increased uh, to access the coronaries. And uh, initially Metronic uh, started this uh, uh, self-expandable stunt. 
which is initially core val then evolute r evolute pro and novel evolute x so these are the there are the different trials where initially they started taking patients who are in high risk who are not suitable candidates for surgery as compared with standard therapy and uh, uh, and few patients where they have taken that patient not fit for surgery and the patient on medical management and compared to a patient non fit for surgery and did tava so these are the uh, different uh, patients they have taken into consideration and uh, patients who are on optimal medical management and patients who got tava had showed a uh, very good outcome the composite endpoint of death from any cause or rehospitalization and cardiac symptoms are significantly reduced so in the partner two trials uh, it says like tavr is non inferior to surgical aortic valve replacement for the primary endpoint at two years for the treatment of severe aortic stenosis in intermediate risk patients so it's a partner one trial it uh, uh, mainly they have taken patients who are at high risk and partner two trial they have taken who uh, patients who are uh, at intermediate risk and uh, 65 above 65 years of age and all where in partner one mostly 75 above uh, uh, age patients were taken so uh, in uh, if uh, if a patient with the severe aortic calcified aortic stenosis or severe symptoms symptomatic severe aortic stenosis even if the age is less than 65 years Uh, so they have taken in partner three trial, which showed that even in a low risk patients, TAVR was superior to SAVR at reducing death, stroke, or rehospitalization at one year. So uh, mainly these are the different trials which show TAVR has uh, better benefit than SAVR, as there are risk involved in SAVR compared uh, to a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. and uh, on the patient uh, uh, even sometimes an in patients who are, who are at high risk uh, high surgical risk uh, uh, also in some patient they have uh, uh, they underwent uh, tava procedure and uh, even low risk trials were being uh, made now uh, so even low risk patients uh, uh, how safe is it to undergo tava and what is the longevity and what is the benefit risk benefit ratio when compared to the all cause model so my valve this is a this is an indian valve uh, merrill life sciences uh, manufacturing this uh, so you can see the valve the bioplastic valve is stitched to the frame uh, the frame has a uh, base uh, uh, like there is a fiber um, uh, like uh, fiber which is stitched for the base so that there won't be any leakages and this uh, down you can see the long sheath which is an introductory sheath through the femoral artery uh, so this is a stretchable sheath through which the device goes through this and goes all the way to the i'll show you in the next videos all the way to the uh, aortic root the sinus cross the aortic valve and then deploy there so my valve is the first uh, uh indian bal where they have uh, multiple studies and uh, uh they have the ce approved in 2019 total implant till now is around 3000 and it's more than 1000 so how to, how do we evaluate uh, for tavr so what is pre tavr evaluation so initially symptoms assessment and the severity of as through uh, 2d echocardiography is very important major cardiovascular and non cardiovascular comorbidities Uh, to be evaluated in the pre evaluation pre procedural anatomical and clinical assessment uh, whether uh, we because there's a big sheets involved and the, the device itself is bulky and we need to uh, uh, like take it through the artery femoral artery is take it through the aorta so we need to uh, anatomically assess the patient before doing this starting this procedure